All right, boys and girls, welcome back. This episode, we're going to talk about Glitch. I finally got around to watching the season finale. Now that it's over, I'm going to provide you with a breakdown of this season's plot, what happens in the finale, and my own reaction to it. We'll start off with the plot. For people who haven't seen the season yet, if you're going to be watching on Netflix, I recommend listening to the plot, skipping the rest so you don't get the spoilers. And you might be asking why this video doesn't have any pictures or videos from the show. Well, you can thank Fremantle and Wentworth for that. They flagged my other video because they used still pictures, so you can blame them. Alright then, here we go. Let's start with the plot. The first season, excuse me, the first episode of season 3 introduces us to Chant, Tam Chi and Belle. Both return from the dead. The episode focuses solely on these two characters. It gives the show a fresh start, and I really appreciated that personally. After that, we are introduced to Sam Guard and Mark. They both work at Nord. Well, Sam works at Nord Guard, and I guess Mark is kind of hired by him to track down the dead. Doctor Hyson is out. Sam has other plans. He enlists the help of Mark to track down and capture the dead. Mark is played by Dustin Clare, who many will remember from Spartacus and Underbelly. If you'll remember, he played Mr. Renekill. As for her dead friends, they go in separate directions. Kirsty and Charlie decide to go to the big city so Kirsty can party it up. While there, Charlie meets a boy named Raph. James visits his family. Pretty much everyone leaves Urana. The only ones that stay behind is Tam Chi and Bella. But they're, you know, they're still new to the show and they're not sure what happened to them. They're trying to get everything figured out. And uh, Sam and Norgard, he has an offer for the dead. He wants to take them to Sweden and study them. Meanwhile, Phil, who was the villain last season, has a change of heart. He comes back and he tries to help them which they're hesitant to take his help, but they eventually come around. As for Patty, I guess he was killed last season, but it, that is not the end of him. The writers bring him back in a very clever way. That's all I'll say about that, so I don't spoil anything for you. So soon into the season, James and William, or John Doe, whichever name you want to use, they have a change of heart. Their experiences lead them to believe that the world is going to end, and they have the solution to prevent that from happening. To prevent that catastrophe, they need to take drastic action. The only problem is that doing that is going to turn them against everyone else. So will they be able to find a solution to prevent the world from being destroyed? What will happen to everyone else? Well, you'll have to watch the season to find out. Or you can always catch up with the recaps on Real Mockery. All right then, I'm gonna stop there. Hope I didn't give too much away. Now it's time to focus on the season finale. If you haven't seen it yet, I suggest stopping here. Otherwise, you're gonna run into support. Uh, you're gonna run into spoilers. Don't say I didn't warn you. The finale starts with Kate rushing back to the lake house to warn the others that James and William are out to kill them. They're not gonna go down without a fight. For too long, William tries to break in. He's shot but not killed. Kate and the others make it to Chris's house. From there, they begin making plans about what to do, all this and that. Uh, James enters at one point, and he's taken into custody. He's handcuffed. Kate and Chris takes him to the police station. And everyone begins making plans about what they want to do in the future. Charlie decides to meet with Raph at the nearby motel, pub, whatever it is. And they decide to go to... and. They want to go to Melbourne together. Kate wants to get away from Yorana too. Tim and Belle, honestly, they're a bit aimless. They don't really have much planned out. Kirsty is the only one that decides to take the offer from Sam at Norgard. She agrees to go to Sweden. She goes there and she gets put into the uh, like a safe room for her. The only problem is she soon finds out that not everything is as it seems. As for James, he stays locked up until William 
recovers, escapes from the hospital, and releases him. Kirsty also makes her escape and eventually meets up with the other. Midway through the episode, Raph is uh, shot with a stun gun. He goes down, has a heart attack, and he dies, returns, nobody notices. Eventually, everyone makes their way to the cemetery. James and Williams try to convince the others that they have to die to save the world. At this point, Raph uh, reveals that he has died and he has a change of heart too. He agrees with William and James. As for Tam Chi, he finds out that he was actually killed by a young Patty. And he wants to perform the ritual and release the spirits. While the others want to leave, William eventually uses some words of wisdom and he blows that whistle. They didn't show it much this season, but it was more prominent in the seasons before. He blows the whistle and it convinces everybody that they're telling the truth. They have no choice and they realize that they all have to die. The only one that ends up surviving is Chris. When they die, their deaths, are rest uh, their deaths restore balance to the world. The fires are stopped. And that's it. We jump forward several years and we see Chris at the cemetery with a much older Nia, James's daughter. He promises to tell her everything that happened on the day of the fire. He gives her the whistle that William used and tell her it was the only thing that was spared by the fire. So Chris is the sole survivor of it all. Alrighty then. Now we're going to get into my own personal opinions, which are just mine. It's not saying anything personal about people that didn't like it. I just try to give you a perspective of, of why I thought it was halfway decent or good or whatever. So anyway, I liked the finale. There were a few things that irked me a bit. I liked the season a lot, but it does seem a bit pointless now. The Norgard guys running around trying to capture everyone. It really led to nothing. Mark just gave up in the end. And the offer to go to Sweden, nobody took that offer. So it kind of was kind of pointless too. William ran into Millie, which was very interesting at the time. And it had a purpose because that's when he discovered the truth. But I would like to have seen that relationship play out a bit more. Another thing is Owen. Owen was shot and killed, so why didn't he return to life after being killed? So the finale was a bit rushed to some degree. Still, I enjoyed it, and I felt that the end was fitting. The writers were obviously limited here. What else could they have done? Sure, they could have found a cure that protected the earth and allowed the dead to continue living, but I mean, how realistic would that have been? People probably would have complained about that too. I'm not sure doing anything else would have been any better, honestly. And obviously, if you watch the season, you could kind of see the end coming. Somewhat kind of predictable. After the first episode, every episode was building up to their death. It was building up to that finale. Now let me just say, I will never understand the science behind Glitch. I'm not sure even the writers do. And the flashbacks... I didn't realize it until somebody mentioned it, or I did realize it, but I thought I was the only one. But I, even watching it and recapping it too, because I watch it and then watch it to recap it, half the time I never knew who was actually in the flashbacks. Like Charlie's friends when they were beating up homosexuals, I never knew who was who. But honestly, it really didn't matter. It was emotional. The finale was very emotional for me. Like Tam and Belle, they only knew each other for one season. They were short-lived, but it was still emotional when they died together. Uh, Kirsty and Charlie stepping into the flames together I thought was emotional. Again, I don't think everybody's going to like the finale, but I did. One thing I got to say is Nia. I thought she was dead or possessed at one point. Didn't something happen to her during the second season? I could be wrong, but I really need to go back and check my own recaps to find out. Because it seems like something happened to her. Either Phil did something to her or she died or something, but it seems like I remember her eyes turning like she had been possessed or killed and come back or something like that. 
which is really strange. But in, anyway, Glitch kept me entertained. Compared to the other shows on television right now, it's one of the best ones I've watched. I've been enjoying Glitch and Les Norton. Both shows have been more entertaining to me than Podark, Wentworth, Peaky Blinders, and many others. That makes me appreciate it so much more. And one thing I'll say is the show really, it really was more about the characters and their relationships and their history, but really their relationships with each other more than the science and the science fiction of it all. To me it was. But that's my personal opinion. I liked the season. I enjoyed the finale. Sure, it probably could have been better, but I enjoyed it. So let me know what you think. Did you like the season? What did you think of the finale? Let me know. I really appreciate seeing other perspectives because it kind of lets you see things from another angle as long as you're willing to be open-minded, which some people are, some people ain't. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for using Real Mockery. Hope to see you again in the future.